Hey, welcome to the L. Rush Show, where we explore ways to get healthy, wealthy, and wise. With a combination of guest interviews and solo episodes, I hope you will be inspired and motivated to become the best of whatever you are. I'm L. Russ, number one best-selling author and subject expert with over a decade of helping thousands of people across the globe. Visit my website, lruss.com, to learn more about free guides, master classes, online courses, and more. Enjoy the show. Hello. So today I want to explore and get into a very powerful quote that actually comes from a British comedian named Jimmy Carr, who is very salacious and dark and twisted. And I love him. But anyway, this is actually like a very powerful quote. And it just hit me. He said, everyone is jealous of what you've got, but no one is jealous of how you got it. And that quote just encapsulates this profound truth about our desire as humans, our nature, the truth about achievement. So I'm going to kind of get into the evolutionary psychology, social dynamics stuff of this and uncover kind of the deeper meanings behind this sentiment because there are valuable insights from this. So I guess from an evolutionary standpoint, jealousy you can see as a survival mechanism, right? So our ancestors lived in these environments where resources were scarce, (laughs) competition was fierce. And so those who could secure resources like food, shelter, mates, they had a better chance of survival passing on their genes. So jealousy can, you know, became ingrained in our psyche sort of as a way to motivate us to strive for success, to, to sort of ensure our place in the social hierarchy, right? But the means by which people achieve success, right, that the means by which someone does involves effort, uh, sometimes sacrifice, and in some cases, adversity. You might have gone through some adversity in your life. So evolutionary psychology would suggest that while we may admire the outward symbols of success, like wealth or status or recognition, we're less inclined to envy the struggles and challenges that led to those achievements, right? Our brains are wired to seek immediate rewards and avoid discomfort or pain. So that's why that quote is just so mm, entrenched into who we are as humans. And then, you know, you can look at some social comparison theoretically, and that can shed some light on this. So, you know, often we tend to evaluate our own worth and success in comparing ourselves to others. This is a huge problem now with social media. I'm sure maybe you've even felt it yourself. This feeling less than or looking at how you feel about yourself because of the comparison to others. So when we see someone who's attained something we want, it can trigger feelings of jealousy of inadequacy. And I always talk about this. I I like the feeling of compersion, feeling happy for other people and their success. And that is the argument I make in confident as fuck in terms of I'm down with OPC, other people's confidence, right? Being happy for others. But sometimes when we see someone has attained something we want, it can trigger that feeling of jealousy or even inadequacy, right? That's a little bit of a low self-worth dealio. But But overlooking the hard work and the failures and the setbacks and all of the stuff that people endured along the way to whatever it is that you wish you had, that sort of like selective perception, you know, it skews your understanding of success. And it also can lead to unrealistic expectations. So let's just like the reality, like what's the reality of success? You know, that's what Jimmy Carr was speaking about. Like No one's jealous. Everyone's jealous of what you've got, but no one's jealous of how you got there. So success stories are, well, look, they're often romanticized in the media, you know, with a focus on the end result, right, rather than the journey. So this can create a skewed perception uh, where the struggles and sacrifice might be minimized or ignored when, like, in reality, if you want to achieve anything worthwhile, that requires persever- perseverance, uh, maybe even resilience, uh, and definitely this willingness to face challenges head on. This like, this like glamorous facade of success 
masks that grit and determination, those essential components of any, any meaningful accomplishment in life. And I want to get into that, the power of resilience, growth, perseverance, Just the process of achieving success, just that process of achieving it, is where serious growth and transformation occurs. Because that's where overcoming obstacles and setbacks builds resilience, but also character. And so it's it's through those experiences, right? The obstacles, the setbacks that we as individuals, we develop not only just like valuable skills, life lessons, we gain a deeper understanding of ourselves through these challenges and obstacles. And so like this journey from A to Z, the nitty gritty in between is, look, it it could be, it could be tough. It could be filled with moments of doubt, frustration, but it's also immensely rewarding. I always talk about authenticity, but authenticity plays a role in this whole context. You know, when we're true to ourselves and our values, we are more likely to find fulfillment in the pursuits. Then the journey becomes meaningful because it aligns with our internal motivations and passions. And authenticity not only enhances just a sense of satisfaction and happiness, but it also inspires others. People are drawn to those who are genuine and transparent about their struggles and triumphs, something I had a hard time doing. And then when I finally did and realized how helpful it was to people, I was like, oh my gosh. We are drawn to those who are genuine and transparent about their struggles and triumphs because it's reality. So then, you know, like embrace the journey, embrace the journey and the path. And I get it. It's like such a cliche thing. But in order to really actually appreciate success, <laughs> you do, you've got to embrace the journey and you have to acknowledge the challenges, which some of them suck. But this means you're not only celebrating like milestones, but also the efforts made along the way, the sacrifices made along the way. You are honoring them and celebrating them. And and by doing all of that, we are developing in that moment of doing this, a healthier, more realistic perspective on our success. And one that just recognizes the value, the just the value of action, hard work, perseverance, resilience. So the quote, everyone is jealous of what you've got, but no one is jealous of how you've got it. Let that be a reminder to you of the complexities of your own nature, but also the true essence, right, of any kind of success pursuit. Strive to be authentic, resilient, and mindful of the effort required because then you can truly celebrate your successes and you can inspire those around you. Here's some examples of people who like, oh, everyone's jealous of what they got, but, you know. (laughs) So, well, obviously Michael Jordan, right? He's admired for his legendary basketball career. I always have to bring him up because I'm from downtown Chicago. He's considered one of the greatest athletes of all time, but the overlooked journey was that he was cut from his high school basketball team. His career was marked by relentless training, setbacks, failures. He used those as motivations to improve. But that was hard. It wasn't just easy. Oprah Winfrey, right? She's obviously admired for her media empire and also like her philanthropic efforts. Just overall cultural icon, but she faced significant challenges too. Poverty, abuse in her childhood. She came, she overcame numerous uh, obstacles to build her career. There's the woman, uh, Sarah Blakely. She was, uh, she founded Spanx. She's like, I think the world's youngest self-made female billionaire, but her overlooked journey is that she faced rejection from numerous manufacturers and investors. And she started that company with her own savings while working a full-time job. So those are just a few examples that can highlight how the journey to success is can be wrought with challenges, setbacks, and it's easy to overlook when you're admiring someone's achievements. Steven Spielberg's another one, right? His iconic films, uh, E.T., Jurassic Park, Schindler's List, one of the most influential filmmakers, but he was, uh, he was rejected multiple times from film schools, and he struggled to get his foot in the door in Hollywood. So his early career was just a ton of setbacks. He worked on numerous smaller projects before finally achieving like his big break, you know, 
It's a relentless perseverance and dedication to his craft. Um, even the guy who started Starbucks, uh, that guy, Howard Schultz, he grew up in public housing. And I think he was the first in family, first in his family to attend college. So um, when he was trying to secure funding for the vision of Starbucks and all of this kind of stuff, he, again, significant obstacles. And some people don't have any obstacles. That's okay, too. What I always say about that is you're like, oh, but it's so not fair. Okay, like here's a good example, a recent one. Um, it was just in the headlines yesterday. Like I just got on the internet and I saw it. It was like, oh, you know, like singers are angry at uh, the actress Kate Hudson for just like making an album because they were like, oh my God, you know, we struggled all this years to become a musician. And then you just roll in and, you know, get to sing your song on American Idol and you could just go into your mansion and produce an album. And right, right. And I get like, I can, you can see, right. But uh, I look at and I go, yeah, but um, if you could do anything you wanted to do because money and power was not an issue, wouldn't you? Like, I get the musician's perspective. Like, it's so not fair. She skipped the line. Well, yeah, but life is life, man. And I would guarantee if you were in her position, you probably wouldn't go play in 500 bars and dive bars across the country first. You would just go to your mansion's basement and record the fucking album you want to record. So before you or when you start to judge or be jealous of someone because they got something easily or handed to them seemingly without anything, what's wrong with that either? So when you look at people's, uh, you can see it, you might go, okay, well, I see why that's the case. Maybe you value it less. Maybe you're not able to enjoy her music because of it. I don't know, but maybe you don't care. It doesn't matter other than when you're jealous and you're looking outward, thinking that someone had an unfair advantage. Just imagine, you would take that advantage if it were you as well. So before you go, you know, pissing on some Nepo babies because they got the star lead in the movie because their parents are so-and-so, wouldn't you too? Yeah, if you were an actor and wanted to be an actor, you totally would skip that fucking line. You absolutely would. Um, so I think, again, just wrapping it up, when you are looking at someone else's life and you're like, oh, so not fair, or you're jealous of what they have. A, are you jealous of what it took to get there? And do you even know? And then B, if it's the example sort of like I just gave you where they just had some crazy unfair advantage, um, would, would, but think about it, you, you'd take that opportunity to, if you were in their position, you can't blame them. You know, it's like, oh, look at that trust fund, baby. Must be nice. Yeah, well, you know what? I don't think you'd fucking complain if you had a trust fund coming your way either. Would you turn it down? Most people would not turn down a multi-million dollar trust fund, right? They just wouldn't. So what you're shitting on, take a look and see, uh, but if you were in that position, what would you do, right? And then also, does that fuel a perspective that you always need to pay dues and strive and that everything has to be a certain way to achieve it? And could it be easier potentially for you? Do you have some limiting beliefs around that? Those are the, some things I'd love it if you just took a look at based on this episode. And the level of personal development depths you can go to by taking a look at this stuff, the results are always prizes in my opinion. I'm always like, when you are doing the self-evaluation and the introspection, uh, the life prizes, it just seems like the universe conspires to just roll in some some things in life that say you're on the right track. All right, everyone, I will see you next week. Hey, thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this show, I would so appreciate you leaving a review on Apple or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. And to learn more about partner discounts on amazing products, visit lrust.com forward slash discounts.